to Rico Heat. Thanks for taking a look at what we're doing. Lots of people have been quite rightly criticising us for not giving enough data about whether or not the flu gets cold and the draft is blocked by having the Rico Heat inside it. Um, if you check out the compliance test report on the website, which we've now put up, um, you can see the actual data for that. But I'm going to show you um, quickly how much noise the Rico heat makes and how the heat from the Rico heat relates to the heat in the flue. Um, you'll see I've got it set up so that there's a hole in the flue that I can put through my um, thermometer and my manometer which tests the flue draft. Um, so before we start that I'm going to check the relative sound in here because it's a shed so it's quite noisy um, with two sound level meters um, because whereas these two pieces of equipment are professional standard and you know they are um, I know the results that they give will be accurate um, sound level meters are incredibly expensive if you want really good ones so I've just got two cheap ones available on Amazon um, so that we can compare the relative sound um, with some certainty so um, if you come and have a look at the kit here I've got the standard Wohler manometer as recommended by Hitas. I've got a um, can't remember the make of this but I've got a um, high quality industrial thermometer with a probe here um, and I've got these two little sound level meters so if I put them on They are both sensitive, but this one is much more sensitive than that one. Um, and actually, when we're completely silent, you'll see it comes down. This one comes down to 30, which is its minimum, and this one doesn't. Okay, so 30.1 and 42.1. Let's write those down. Um, so now I'm going to switch the heat, Rico heat on and I'm going to test the So I'm standing here at one meter That's averaging about 47. Forty-three point two. And at two meters. It's hard if I make any movement, it hears it. Forty two point seven, say. It's too wild to be worth very much. Um, um, so let's, yeah. So if we look at the relative, of forty percent. Forty-three point seven. So that's the sound. So I'm now going to light the fire. I'll get that lit um, so that we can then measure the temperature, measure the pressure, and. Um, measure the, the, the um, decibel level when there is air that's heated coming through there. So the first thing we're going to do is on the manometer C 
setting that so it's showing zero. We put it through here. Door closed. Turn that off. Door closed, see if there's any draft. So there's a draw, when I open the door, there's a draw of one. Okay. And the boat. So now I'm gonna, now I'm gonna light the fire. Got a nice upside down fire set up. I'm not bothered about how much heat is going to come out because it's all relative stuff I'm looking at. But too light, isn't it? I see the temperature in here. 12.4. And just to give an idea, I'll just measure the temperature outside so we see what the temperature at the top of the chimney is going to be like. There, 9.7 out here. To, oh, to, just to show you what this system, how the system runs. That's the little pump that runs it. So I've got it through because in the shed it vibrates, but in a normal situation it's completely silent. You can hear well, the pump is silent, but it has a hiss as the air comes running in. Um, so that's what you can hear on the inside. So it's starting up, the temperature of the Rico in the Rico heat it says 88, 89, obviously it's getting hotter. There's the temperature in the flue. is 225. Let's just check that again because obviously the timing is crucial. The really important thing that we get, that we need to ensure, is that the temperature of the flu doesn't drop because of the Rico heat. So the Rico heat is recovering 145 degrees of heat and pumping that out. from a flue gas temperature of, yeah, so you see it was probably about 280 at the same time. And that's consistently what we're getting. At the same time, the, the top of the flue, that's what we were testing for the compliance testing, the top of the flue, about the highest one, that's 72 degrees. So 72, Two hundred and ten three hundred and twenty. And that um, from the testing that we've done so far, and we'll do a good deal more, um, the Rico heat will heat up, the stove obviously will heat up, but the the um, temperature of the gas is does not seem to be impeded at all by the Rico heat and in terms of the physics it shouldn't be because the Rico heat is a steel coil so it's a stainless steel, steel 316 corrosion and heat proof steel coil that is heated by the flame so the coil is heated the air doesn't come in contact with the with the flue uh, or with the flue gases 
that's being pumped and the rate it's being pumped at um, increases towards the end of the coil because the air heats up. So when it hits 238 degrees it doubles in volume and the only place that volume can go is out this way. So it goes send up the coil, down the coil, it's heating up and it comes rushing out. So that increases the speed it comes out at. But the steady input um, volume of air is one litre per second. Um, but again, as that heats up, it's not affecting the, the, the flue gas temperatures because the temperature of the coil is relatively, changes little. It heats up and then it stays heated up. And it heats up, you can see, relative to the, um, to the temperature of the gases. But then it's going, to be, it's going to be hotter than the size of the flue because it's retaining, it's able to storage, to store heat. Whereas the flue, the flue gases are going past it. But so if we look at the flue temperature on the outside, 190 above the Rico heat, below the Rico heat, because the Rico heat is made of a section of flue, so it's exactly the same material. 245 because it's closer to the source. Uh, above, completely above the coil. Ninety-one. Much the same up there, but the gas, but the flue temperature inside. is now nearly 420, so it's over 400 degrees. And you see the little flu thermometer on there is saying is that it's already in best operation. So that's how we gauge whether it's burning properly. Below this temperature, it's not burning hot enough, and creosote will form on the inside of the flu. Here, within this um, ideal temperature range, the flu gases will um, carry the creosote out, and they won't stick to the side. So that's a healthy burn, that's what we're trying to achieve whenever we're lighting the stove. Um, and as long as we get that temperature, then the, fl the flue will keep clean. So the important thing for us is that the Rico heat does not impede the chimney's ability to get hot and get rid of all that rubbish up the chimney and stop creosote forming on the side of the flue where it can then subsequently catch fire and cause a chimney fire. So now let's look at the pressure. So it's saying one now, so I'm going to change it, reset it to zero. So that's on zero, putting it through. The drill, the hole is drilled for the thing, so it's pretty much sealing it there. Okay, so I'm getting a draw of 17, which is, uh, seems to be pretty standard on this flue. It's a three metre flue, um, single skin for the first metre, double skin for the next two. So that's 17, so that's absolutely, the, ooh, gone up to 18. So the, the required draw is between 12 and 25, so that's, that's great, that's perfect. So actually, let's test the decibel level. Just need to reset. So this is much the same. It's not picking up much heat from much sound from the from the stove. Um, this is picking up a bit. I'm going to switch the Rico heat on and then move to the side because the um, the air blowing out from the Rico heat otherwise makes it go nuts. So the decibel level 
so up to 23 at one meter. About 20 at two meters. So that's how hot it is. And because that temperature is now So now the temperature is nearly 400 degrees coming out the Rico heat, and Let's see if that's going. For 30 in the flue, um, the air speed has doubled so that's why you're getting more sound um, so because the air speed's coming out faster it the, the hiss is louder and particularly on the sound um, the, 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 when you're measuring de decibel level it's all about pressure so it's uh, you know makes it louder um, but and that's it so you know if you sit in front of it on a quiet evening turn it off it's inert There's nothing happening inside the flue, so um, it can't heat up. It, uh, sorry, it can't overheat. It's a piece of steel. Nothing happens to it. It's the same steel as the flue. So it's as safe and inert as the flue itself. So you can just not have it on. So if you're sitting in front of it for an hour, switch it off. Because most of the benefit of the Rico heat comes when you stop putting fuel on it and it carries out, carries on. Sorry. Uh, and it carries on pumping heat out like this for hours after your stove starts cooling down. But anyway, there's some data for you. That's just showing you that the Rico heat being fitted to your unit does not flow the gas flue temperature, does not slow down the, the, the flow of air up the draft, and does not cause problems in your stove unit. Thanks very much for watching.